من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد all praises and thanks are due to Allah we praise him we seek his help and uh, we beg for his forgiveness we seek Allah's refuge from our evil deeds whomever Allah guides cannot be led astray and uh, whomever is led astray shall find none other than to guide him I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone who has no partner and I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is his slave and messenger. Today is our tafsir number six in the morning session being conducted here at Anur Masjid Wusetu Abuja, where we study the number 67th chapter of the glorious Quran that is Suratul Mulk, the chapter that explains to us in clear terms the authority, power, kingdom, and dominion of our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned yesterday, today, inshallah, is going to be our final lesson in this chapter. And I do hope that it's going to be our final lesson in the morning session tafsir. But for the evening, inshallah, we will continue. May Allah Ta'ala make us to be among the major beneficiaries of the glorious Quran. You may recall that I earlier explained to you that many traditions of our beloved Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam expound to us the virtues of uh, Suratul Mulk and the benefits of holding on to it. For example, Abdullah ibn Mas'udin, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Kunna nusammiha fi ahadi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-mani'ah. We used to call Suratul Mulk at the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him as al-mani, the protector, the one that prevents. It prevents you from what? From the punishment of the grave. And he said, it is tabarak al-ladhi biyadihil mulk. And he said the Prophet teaches us to recite it every night. Within 24 hours, you are ought to recite Suratul Mulk. This hadith has been reported and authenticated in Sahih al-Targhib wa Targhib, hadith number 1400 and uh, 75. In another tradition, 
the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says suratun fil quran khasamat an sahibiha hatta adkhalatu al janna wa fi riwayat hatta akhrajatu min an nar wa adkhalatu al janna that there is a chapter in the quran it is suratul mulk it will argue on behalf of its companion khasamat an sahibiha until and unless it takes him away from hellfire to paradise this hadith has been reported in sunan abi daud volume 2 hadith number 111 furthermore in another tradition the prophet peace and blessings of allah be upon him says inna suratan fil quran 30 ayah There is a chapter in the Quran which has 30 verses. Shafa'at li sahibiha it will intercede on behalf of its companion until he is forgiven. This hadith also has been reported in the Sahih Ibn Majah hadith number 3053. These are some of the traditions that expound and enunciate to us the benefits and the virtues of a suratul mulk i encourage all of us to ensure that we memorize this chapter by heart prior to that we always open our glorious quran read suratul mulk particularly at night no matter how busy we are that will not be an excuse we have to read this chapter every day particularly at night and this is indeed very important to all of us looking at the benefits of our suratul mulk may allah ta'ala make us to be among the beneficiaries of this chapter may allah ta'ala make us to be among those that are going to be forgiven in this prestigious month of ramadan may allah forgive our parents may he forgive our teachers may he subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our family may he forgive our be- beloved ones May he forgive our children may he subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to follow his religion and also allow us to depart this world as genuine believers today insha Allah is going to be our concluding lesson and i do hope that we are going to complete the chapter today so permit me that i will not emphasize on necessarily in the explanation i will try to make it very concise and precise however comprehensive whatever i know is important insha allah i will mention and i will not put more burden on our reciter i will only make reference to what we previously learned so that we will be able to redeem time and make progress may allah taala guide us aright and i will beg him to recite from where we stopped yesterday to the last verse of uh, the chapter insha allah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفسه أمن هذا الذي يمزقكم إن أمسك رزقه بل لجوا في عدو ونفور أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه
وقيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيتم إن أهلكني الله ومن معي أو رحمنا فمن يجيب الكافرين فمن Allah reward you immensely. The Quran says, as I earlier mentioned, inshallah we are going to conclude. So permit me to be very precise and concise on one hand and comprehensive on the other, meaning that I will try to avoid unnecessary explanations or what I have earlier said, except if it becomes necessary, I will just make an attempt to point at our previous lessons. May Allah Ta'ala guide us aright. The Quran says, أَمَّنْ هَذَا الَّذِي يَرْزُقُكُمْ إِنْ أَمْسَكَ رِزْقَ بَلْ لَجُّ فِي عُتُوِّ وَنُفُورِ أَمَّنْ هَذَا الَّذِي Who is he? You may wish to say, who, it, who is it? يَرْزُقُكُمْ That will provide for you the provision. That will be able to provide for you in Amsaka Rizka if he withholds his own provision. Meaning, if Allah Amsaka Rizka withholds his provision from us, our food, our drinks, the oxygen we breathe in, if Allah Ta'ala withholds, which alternative do we have to get oxygen? Which alternative do you have to get food to eat or to get drinks to drink? What are the alternatives? Where are they? Who is going to provide for you? The heaven is for Allah. The earth is for Allah. What we eat and what we drink, you either come from the earth or from the heaven, the sky. The oxygen we breathe in, who can give you sufficient artificial oxygen to breathe in? This is a question that Allah Ta'ala is challenging us. Just to remember his bounties upon us. Let us remember the bounties of Allah. His favors, his blessings are uncountable. These are very few of them. The oxygen, the food, and the drink. If Allah withholds, then who is going to provide for us? In Amsaka Rizqa. As we all know that what we eat and what we drink is from Allah and He is the all provider. Inna Allah huwa razzaqu dhul quwwatil mateen as in Surah Al-Dhariyat verse number 58 that Allah is the all provider. Whatever you get is from Allah. We take care of our family. Even the money you get to purchase food at home is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are only an intermediary that is why with or without parents, children survive. The life could not be the same. There could be more challenges, but still they survive. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala is the all provider. When our parents are alive, Allah Ta'ala gives to us sometimes through them. But they are not the actual providers. Allah is the all provider. So when Allah Ta'ala withholds his provision, who is there to provide? Just let us assume in this world to spend only 30 minutes without oxygen. How many people are going to survive? It's just a simple question. How many people are going to survive? Look at what happened during COVID-19 pandemic when our respiratory system 
was blocked by COVID infection. What happened? Discover that people were taken to the hospital looking for what? Respirator to survive just for a few minutes. And when there is no ventilator, it is another issue. Many of us fail to realize that the oxygen we breathe in is from Allah. And we are undermining that favor. That blessing is being undermined. So, Amman hadha alladhi yarzukukum in amsaka rizqa. Who is it that will provide for you when Allah withholds his provision? This verse is addressing all of us with more emphasis to those who disbelieve in Allah the exalted. That is why the concluding part of the verse says, Balladju nay. Laju fi otuwin, they continue. Fi otuwin, in pride and arrogance. Wanufur, and fleeing away from the truth. Running away from the truth. No matter what you say, any evidence you give them, any example you cite, they will turn away from it. That is balladju ne. They, 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 they continue. Laju is an Arabic word which indicates continuation and that continuation is dogmatic in nature that is they follow their evil desire they are not looking for the strength of the evidence being presented to them if it is a let you let you is just to indicate people that it is absolutely difficult sometimes almost impossible to change their position they hold on to their position with evidence or without evidence they will still hold on to it and when you argue with them, you will discover in most cases they will speak with you harshly or aggressively or even with a full language. So that is alleged Jew. People that hardly change their position. They maintain the status quo. Fear or two win in pride and arrogance. In pride either because of the position they occupy or the resources they have at their disposal or their family background one fool and they flee away they run away from the truth they are not willing to comply that is why the two lessons we earlier learned where Allah Ta'ala draws our attention to as is very important law kunna nasma'u aw na'akil we have earlier explained. Law kunna nasma, listening is very important. Naakil, reflection and pondering, or rather you can say critical thinking, is also very important. Balladju fi otuwiu wa nufur. In our first lesson, I earlier said that in each and every chapter of the Quran, you will discover it's ha it has its own divine unique signature these are some of the unique words being mentioned in surah al-mulk and for example this is verse number 21 look at the first verse verse 2 3 4 5 up to verse 21 you will discover that the words have something in unique look at the last word in each verse go through with me the first verse كل شيء قدير الغفور فطور حصير سعير مسير تفور نذير كبير الصعير الصعير كبير الصدور الخبير النشور التمور النذير نكير بصير غرور نفور look at it you will discover that each and every verse concludes with ar ra ra as the last letter and look at the way the verses have been divinely arranged and look at the meaning of each and every word you will just be amazed
and you will strongly believe that the Quran is infallible. There is no doubt about this. The grammar is just something else, is is superb. The structure is, is just amazing. Who is rightly guided between these people? Afamai Yamshi Mukibban, the one who walks, the one who crawls, Mukibban on his face down, somebody walking on his face. Is he the one who is guided? Ammai Yamshi ala siratin mustaqim, Ammai Yamshi sawiyan ala siratin mustaqim, or the one who walks upright on the right path. The one walking on his leg, is he the one guided or the one that is crawling, that is walking on his face? Which one is guided? Which one is rightly guided? The one that walks on his legs is the one that is rightly guided. This is what Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said as a parable in the Quran. This is a parable or what we can call exemplification. This is the par parable of the Quran. Quran comes up with so many parables in order to engage us to partake in critical thinking. We are ought to think critically. And that is why Quran mentions to us many parables. There are so many parables in the Quran, and this is one of them. It's just a simple question. Is the one walking and crawling on his face down while his legs are up, is he the one that is rightly guided or the one that is walking on his feet? Which one is rightly guided? There is no doubt. The one walking on his legs is the one that is rightly guided, not the one walking on his face. This is just a parable. And this parable by implication in this world, anyone who follows the guidance of Allah, by implication he walks on his legs. And anyone who doesn't follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means he walks on his face, upside down. Companions asked our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when this verse was revealed that is it possible in the hereafter for some people to even walk on their face? How can that be possible? And he said to them, "Alaysa alladhi amshahum ala arjulihim qadiran ala ayyumshiyahum ala wujuhihim is the one who earlier created them in that best form of creation with legs and hands and he allows them to walk on their legs are you in doubt that the same creator will be able to change their creation and allow them to walk on their face on the day of kiyama so if you are challenging the probability of walking on their face why are you not challenging the origin of the creation because there was a time that we were not here nobody was in this world Allah created all of us so originating our creation is absolutely more difficult than changing our creation there is no doubt about this so this is a parable this parable is important when you follow the guidance of your creator you walk on your legs. When you disobey and turn away from his guidance by implication, you walk on your face down. The one who walks on his legs is the one that is rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to always be among those that are rightly guided. 
Kul, say to them, O Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Or say to them, the reciter or the interpreter of the Quran, Kul, huwa alladhi ansha'akum. Allah is the one. Ansha'akum, who originated your creation. Waja'ala lakumu sam'a. And he endowed you, he blessed you with a sum a hearing. By implication, hearing means the organ of hearing, our ears. Wal abusara and seeing, meaning the organs of a seeing, that is our eyes. Wal afida and the heart. We reflect, we ponder, we evaluate matters. But qalilam ma tashkurun. Few give thanks to him. Meaning, few people give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessings. Look at these three blessings that have been mentioned in this verse. Number one, the blessing of a our hearing, our ears. Two, the blessing of our eyes, we see. Three, the blessing of our heart that is on the left side of our chest, very close to our left lung. These three organs, you hear with your ears when something is said. You look at the creation of Allah with your eyes. Look at the heaven and see what Allah Ta'ala has created. Look at the earth, what Allah Ta'ala has created, all of them for us, to enjoy our life. And when we enjoy our life, we are ought to serve and worship Him. You see the miracles, the architecture in nature, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You listen to the Quran with your ears, the guidance in the Quran. You listen to the teachings of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam with your ears. You use your heart, your mind to reflect and ponder, evaluate. At the end, you will definitely realize that none deserves to be worshipped but Allah. And whatever we do in worshipping him, we are not making any favor to him, but we are only making it to ourselves. Because we did not contribute in making him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this world, Somebody could contribute to making you who you are today in one way or the other when Allah Ta'ala gives him the opportunity. Our brother memorizes the Quran because his teacher, teacher taught him. He will remain grateful to those who taught him the Quran. Are you following? You supported your husband in making him to be a husband. Without you, he is not a husband. He supported you in making you a wife. Without him, you will not be a wife. Your parents supported you in making you a child. Without them, you will not be a child. If you have a degree, you are teachers, and the institution that has given you the degree and the teachers that have taught you contributed to that. So you will discover if you are a king or an emir, some people appointed you, king makers convert and nominated you and at the end you are approved. If you occupy an office, you are either appointed or elected. 
So some people contributed. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none of us has contributed in making him Allah. And with or without us, he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did not. Before our creation, he is Allah. During our creation, he is Allah. When we depart this world, he is Allah. In this world, he is Allah. In the hereafter, he is Allah. And when we are in paradise, he is Allah. We did not contribute in making him Allah in any way whatsoever. But he subhanahu wa ta'ala has not only contributed, but he has met us, met us who we are today. Look at the organs he has given to us. And he says again in another place, in the Saba, Wal Basara, Wal Fuada, Kulu Ula Eka Kana Anhu, Masula, as in Surah Al Isra, verse number 36. Don't say anything without knowledge. The organ of a hearing, and the organ of seeing, and the mind you used to reflect, or the intellect, will be questioned on the day of Qiyamah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether we utilize them effectively, responsibly, religiously and wisely or we do otherwise. They are important. May Allah ta'ala guide us to make use of these very important organs and all other organs of our body wisely, religiously and responsibly. <laughs> Kul, say to them, Ya Muhammad, say to them, <coughs> the reciters of the Quran, the interpreters of the Quran, the scholars of the Quranic exegesis, say to them, Who It is He, Allah, that created you. Fil Ardi from the earth. Our creation is from the earth. Yesterday, our reciter, Brother Abdullahi Abbazaria, recited some verses to us from Surah Al Mu'minun to show to us the beginning of our creation, up to the end of it, and up to the time we depart this world, and also our life in the hereafter. وَلَقَدِ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطُفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينَ ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُطُفَةَ أَلَقَةً وَخَلَقْنَا الْأَلَقَةَ مُذْغَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُذْغَةَ إِذَامًا فَكَسَوْنَا الْإِذَامَ لَحْمًا ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخَرَ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ This is in Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 12, 13 and 14. For example, take verse 12. Allah Ta'ala created us min sulalatin min teen, from a clay. Look at it. The origin of our creation is from the earth. And this verse, the origin of our creation divinely teaches us to be humble. This earth, we look at it as nothing. You can take it anywhere you like. You walk on it. Anything that you don't like, you throw it away on the earth. And this earth is the origin of our creation. Our origin of creation is not from the heaven, not from gold or silver or diamond, but from the earth. We are supposed to be humble. And also, if you look at it, the stages of our creation from chromosomes and the liquid content from our parents is another stage that is teaching us to be humble in life. How we were conceived to the time we came into this world. If you look at the stages, you could know better than me. This stage teaches us to be humble and is very important.
May Allah Ta'ala guide us aright. So the entire stages of embryology teach us to be humble. Our origin teaches us to be humble. May Allah Ta'ala guide us to follow the do's and don'ts ordained by Him. Allah Ta'ala is the one who created you from the earth. Wa ilayhi tuhusharun. And to Him you will be gathered. On the day of judgment, all of us will be gathered before Allah. All of us. Nobody will be left out. Whether you believe in Him or you disbelieve in Him, a male or a female, an African, from Asia, from Europe, from America, from any part of the world, we will be gathered before Him. Today, according to the United Nations, by 15 November 2022, just last year, the world population reached 8 billion people. And according to their investigation, the total number of people who live on this cosmos, in this world, Wallahu ta'ala a'alam bisawab, this is just their estimation. From the inception of this world to death, around 109 billion people lived in this world 109 billion people lived in this world according to their estimation but today on earth approximately we have 8 billion people so from the origin of our creation from the history of mankind to the end of the world we will all be gathered before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of us are going to be gathered naked. All of us. And this is very important. This also teaches us to be humble and to follow the teachings ordained by Him. Now. <laughs> and they ask. Literally, you can say, they say, but technically, they ask. Mata had al word. When will this threat happen? Please tell us. You have been threatening us that there is end of this life. There is a day of judgment. There is hellfire. There is jahannam. There is paradise. So, mata had al word. When is this threat going to happen? Meaning unbelievers were challenging our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about what he was telling them about the end of this life and, and another life in the next world. This promise, this covenant, this threat, you have been threatening us that this life has an end and when we die there is going to be resurrection and when we are resurrected there is going to be a judgment and some are going to paradise some are going to hellfire so when is that going to happen by implication they were inviting allah to terminate their life in this world and show them the life in the hereafter and they said to him in kuntum sadiqin in shartiya when is that threat going to happen if you are speaking the truth if what you say oh muhammad is true tell us when is that going to happen we they had they had been waiting for a long period of time nothing happened so they were challenging him so if at all you speak the truth when is that going to happen that is why sometimes when people enjoy their life in this world including some nominal Muslims they start to forget about the life in the hereafter when you look at how some of us live and behave in this world believe me you will strongly agree that even if in their utterances they agree that there is the last day and there is judgment day definitely through their action they disagree their actions do not agree that they strongly believe there is another wall after this life and the quality of that life depends on their action in this world 
wa yaquluna mata hadha alwa'du in kuntum sadiqin naam qul innama alilmu indallahi wa innama ana nadhirun mubin qul say to them ya muhammad peace and blessings of allah be upon him innama alilmu indallah certainly and undoubtedly the knowledge of the hour is with allah meaning only allah knows when the last hour will strike is among the mafatihul ghaib that nobody knows them except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are mafatihul ghaib inna allah موسیقی our beloved rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to tell them when they were challenging him when was that threat going to happen he said tell them inna mal ilmu indallah that knowledge is with allah so the knowledge of uh, ilmu sa'a the last hour the last day exclusively belongs to allah nobody has power over that nobody has knowledge over it because if one person will know it should be our respected and at the same time the most honorable of Allah's creatures Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him he is the most honorable of all of us not only among the humans including among the jinns and the angels he is the most honorable sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam still Allah ta'ala directed him to say قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْإِلْمُ إِنَّ اللَّهِ The knowledge of the last hour belongs to Allah is with Allah exclusively. But in the Quran and in the Sunnah, Islam has taught us some signs of the last hour. There are major signs and there are minor signs of the last hour. The minor signs, one may safely say, most probably, around 90 percent of them are caught the major signs only few of them most of them are yet to occur however when they begin to occur then definitely they will occur in series simultaneously and some of them will occur concurrently and at that time even if someone repents to allah his repentance will not be accepted so by implication if we are to make any adjustment we have to do it while in this world and it is our collective responsibility to ensure that we educate our children we look at their own upbringing effectively this is one of the major challenges today if you look at upbringing subhanallah Particularly today, look at our marital affairs. Look at even our ceremonies during our marriage. Nothing to write home about. In some situations, you can hardly disagree that people doing this are indeed mu'minun. You can hardly agree. The way our children during their marriages disobey Allah, and sometimes even the parents will attend the event there is no modesty they don't feel any shy 
fa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and that is why most of marriages today they don't last long and secondly within the honeymoon period they will start encountering crisis why the blessings of that marriage have been deleted during their own celebration by being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any disobedience to Allah in a marriage is reducing the quantity and quality of that blessings in that marriage any disobedience to him and the, 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 the more people disobey him the more the blessing is reducing and that is why you will see immediately after the marriage within one month you will start receiving complaints why we have destroyed all the blessings our marriage is for our life if there is one thing that you cannot sacrifice in your life is the blessing of your marriage don't sacrifice that in any situation and don't allow your children to sacrifice that this marriage is half of your religion from the time you get married you are plan you want to spend the remaining part of your life with your spouse number three your children are from that marriage if the marriage is blessed the children are going to be blessed if the marriage is not blessed even the children are not going to be blessed so by implication disobedience to Allah in our marriages establishes the foundation of the total destruction of our institution of marriage the total is not partial is the total destruction our children partake in even pre-wedding picture pre-wedding picture did he get married to her no he's not her husband he will go to the extent of even putting his head hand on her and even if they are married a situation where you put your hand on your spouse is it for public is this supposed to be for public we need to partake in safe judgment and safe criticism and safe evaluation these things are very important may allah ta'ala guide us aright wa inna ma ana nadhirun mubin and certainly i am only a warner to you ana nadhirun mubin i am just a plain warner to you i am just a clear warner to you prophet came as a warner but he doesn't control the last hour allah ta'ala controls it naam falamma ra'awhu zulfatan siat wujuhu alladhina kafaru wa qila hadha alladhi kuntum bihi tad'un falamma ra'awhu zulfatan see at wujuhul ladina kafaru when they saw the last day the day of judgment when they saw the paradise and the hell fire the hell fire that they are going to be admitted into see zulfatan unexpectedly see at wujuhul ladina kafaru the faces of those who disbelieve in Allah will turn gloomy will turn sad and grievous it will completely change because it is going to be a horrible situation very horrible see at wujuhul ladina kafaru completely their faces will turn gloomy they will be unhappy they will be terrible and horrible they will find themselves in a very terrible and horrible situation that is see at wujuhul ladina kafaru wa qila and it will be said to them hadha alladhi kuntum bihi tad'un this is what you were threatening before by saying 
متى هذا الوعد ان كنتم صادقين it will be said to them they will be reminded you are threatening believers in the wall when is that promise so now this is what you are threatening them it happened to you that is waqila hadha alladhi kuntum bihi tad'un and this is what the quran draws our attention to by saying wa badalahum min allahi ma lam yakunu wa badalahum min allahi ma lam yakunu yahtasibun wa badalahum sayyatu ma kasabu walladhina walamu This is in Surah Az-Zumar the completing part of uh, verse 47 and verse 48 wa badalahum min allahi ma lam yakunu yahtasibun it occurs to them from their lord from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they never expected to happen because by the time they were challenging by the time they have been invited to islam they were challenging On the day of judgment it occurs to them that it was not what we were assuming that the day of judgment is real and that is why it is always important to invite people to our religion and while inviting non-muslims to Islam we should do that politely do it wisely ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikma as in surah an-nahl verse 125 do it wisely we need to deploy wisdom and most importantly we have to invite them through our good moral behavior we should be very generous to them very kind to them we should be peace loving people we should be very just we should be upright when they are in need we support them we show our, at least a very good qualities of our religion when it comes to our interaction with them that is why the best way to invite non muslims to islam is through the demonstration of the teaching of islam islam is all about kindness about generosity hospitality mercy and the many more we have to demonstrate that when you live with people that are not muslims don't in any way interact with them harshly don't do that be kind to them be generous to them be humble to them be merciful to them all these things are very important when they are in need support them when they are poor support them where necessary when they are sick go and visit them and wish them all the best when they need any financial support from them from you and you have the capacity to give you have the ability give them in islam we are not only urged to invite others to our religion through our utterances but rather through the practical demonstration of the teachings of our religion that is what is important and this is where many muslims are missing we don't interact with non muslims cordially we don't show them the beauty of islam only what they know about religion is on media and media has been very unfair to islam whether locally or internationally they always try to blackmail islam they always try to criticize islam we as muslims sometimes we fail to show the good side of our religion even though there is no any bad side of islam there is nothing like that wa qila hadha alladhi kuntum bihi tad'un na'am qul araaytum in ahlakani allahu wa man ma'iya aw rahimana fa may yudhiul kafirin min 'adhab Say to them O Muhammad qul ara'aytum tell me in ahalakani allah if allah destroys me 
wa mamma iya andos with me oh rahimani oh he is merciful to me either of the two as the disbelievers said to him that allah will destroy him tell them if allah destroys me and those with me or he either destroys me and those with me or he is merciful to me these are the two options as they claim ask them who is there to salvage them from the punishment of the hellfire for me yujirul kafirin who is there to emancipate the disbelievers min adhabin alim who is going there to 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 salvage them to emancipate them to rescue them from the punishment you prophet muhammad and those who believe in your message have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there for them we have allah on the day of judgment who is there for those who disbelieve in him this is a 1 billion dollar question meaning nobody is there for them because the entire authority power dominion and kingdom of the day of qiyamah belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else naam qul huwa arrahman amanna bihi wa alayhi tawakkalna fa sata'lamun man huwa fi dalalin mubin say to them qul huwa arrahman it is he the most merciful or the entirely merciful or the most gracious or the most compassionate allah ar-rahman this name of ar-rahman has been repeated 57 times in the glorious quran to show to us that allah ta'ala is entirely merciful he is the most gracious and also the most compassionate tell them o muhammad it is not according to their assumption the final con- the conclusion on the day of judgment qul huwa arrahman allah the most merciful the entirely merciful the most gracious will be there for me alayhi tawakkalna amanna bi in him we believe in him alone we believe as our lord wa alayhi tawakkalna and in him a lot we trust meaning we put our trust in him alone fa sata'lamuna man huwa fi dhalalim mubin you will soon know those who are in a great error who are those meaning the disbelievers are in a great error but in the case of those who believe in allah they have ar rahman to take care of them on the day of resurrection allah ta'ala is there for those who believe in him may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us consistency and constancy in our iman and in our faith naam qul araaytum in asbaha ma'akum Qul ara'aytum Qul say to them ya Muhammad or say to them you reciter of the Quran ara'aytum tell them in asbaha ma'akum ghawran if there are water the water we have we are drinking taking bath doing whatever we want to what to sink to go back to the earth to the extent that that water will not be reachable even through drilling a borehole famay yatikum bima in ma'in then who will be there to give you a flowing water who is there to give you any water to drink or to take care of you as we all know that water is life just assume close your eyes for only 5 seconds and think that there is no water in this world for one year the entire water we have disappears what is going to happen that is why allah ta'ala has uncountable number of people to teach us bitter lessons 
within a second Allah Ta'ala can cause the entire water of this world to disappear today covering the face of the earth 71 percent is water only 29 percent is by land by this earth still in our body for male adult male you will discover 60 percent of our body approximately is water for females is 55 percent approximately is nothing but what but water because women have more fat in their bodies than men that is why it is easier for male to build muscles than for female to build muscles and medically one can live with only water scientifically for three to four weeks one can survive for 28 days in this world without eating anything but drinking water but without water or any content of water from fruit or any other thing one can hardly survive more than four days in this world can hardly because of what because the entire life depends on water as in surah al anbiya verse 30. so that is why the quran challenges in gawran. if the water sinks the water disappears who is there to give you any water for you to drink today we are fasting who is there to give you water to drink for you are iftar to break your fasting wallahi al-adhim that is enough to draw our attention to follow the injunctions of our religion and also to be obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has uncountable number of ways to deal with us to teach us bitter lessons he can withhold he can withhold his oxygen that is sufficient he can cause water to disappear that is sufficient he can prevent some of uh, the conditions necessary for photosynthesis like sunlight or carbon dioxide then what will happen if there is no photosynthesis what are you going to eat subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka atubu ilaik may allah ta'ala make us to be among the major beneficiaries of this chapter and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability and the way with us to follow all the teachings of the noble quran may allah ta'ala forgive our parents may he forgive our teachers and our loved ones rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidun majid allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha وزكها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها اللهم انا نسالك بان نشهد ان لا اله الا انت الاحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد اللهم ول علينا امورنا خيارنا ولا تول علينا امورنا شرارنا اللهم اصلح ائمتنا وعلماءنا وشبابنا وولاه امورنا اللهم كن معنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم ارحم اباءنا وامهاتنا واخواننا وذريتنا اللهم ارحم اباءنا وامهاتنا واخواننا وذريتنا اللهم ارحم اباءنا وامهاتنا واخواننا وكل من سبقنا بالايمان اللهم اجعل قبورهم روضه من رياض الجنه اللهم اجعل قبورهم روضه من رياض الجنه اللهم اجعل قبورهم روضه من رياض الجنه اللهم انا نسالك الحياه والمعيشه الطيبه معهم في جنه الفردوس ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب اللهم ارحمنا في هذا الشهر المبارك اللهم ارحمنا في هذا الشهر المبارك 
اللهم ارحمنا في هذا الشهر المبارك اللهم تقبل دعاءنا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا اللهم اغفر لجميع موتى المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانيه وللنبي كبير الرساله وماتوا على ذلك اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وافيهم واعف عنهم واكرم نزلهم ووسع مدخلهم واغسلهم بالماء والثلج والبرد ونقهم من الذنوب والخطايا كما ينقى الثوب الابيض من الدنس اللهم انصر اخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين المؤذبين في كل مكان اللهم انصر اخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين المؤذبين في كل مكان اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين المسلمين اينما كانوا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا ودعاء من سال الدعاء منا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا ودعاء من سال الدعاء منا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا ودعاء من سال الدعاء منا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا ودعاء من طلب الدعاء منا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا ودعاء من طلب الدعاء منا اللهم تقبل دعاءنا ودعاء من طلب الدعاء منا اللهم اغفر لنا من خشيتك ما تهول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهول به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتئنا اللهم باسمائنا وابصارنا وقوتنا ابدا ما ابقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثارنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من ادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا الى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنه هي دارنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يكافك فينا ولا يرحمنا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين ما الله سبحانه وتعالى forgive and be merciful to our parents ما الله تعالى forgive and be merciful to our deceased parents ما الله تعالى bless our families ما هي سبحانه وتعالى bless our children ما هي make them to be very upright and responsible ما الله سبحانه وتعالى respond positively to our prayers ما هي سبحانه وتعالى answer our prayers For those of us who are sick we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa For those that are looking for marriage we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them to a responsible spouse We have our personal challenges we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond positively to all our challenges We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our country Nigeria May he subhanahu wa ta'ala give us absolute peace stability and development May he subhanahu wa ta'ala bring more prosperity to Nigeria. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to guide us and pro- protect us from all evils. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidul Majid. O oh Allah, we pray for peace in our country not war. We pray for unity not division. We pray for benevolence. We pray for conviction. O oh Allah, we pray to you to give us the ability and the way we will to treat the weak ones the way we want to be treated when we find ourselves in the same position. O oh Allah, give us the ability to treat the weak ones and the poor in a manner that is even better than the way we want to be treated when we find ourselves in the same position. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us be with our country Nigeria continue to support and protect us continue to support and protect us O oh Allah we pray to you to continue to protect and support us we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all other countries particularly where weak ones are being treated unjustly Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Amen. Um, um.